founded by the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus, Saragossa was occupied for centuries by the Arabs, who left a rich historical and artistic legacy. Today, Saragossa is a modern city that preserves a historic center full of centuries-old buildings, charming little squares, narrow streets and lots of life and animation. In today's video we are going to share with you 13 reasons to visit and fall in love with Zaragoza, our city. Hola, hello, I am Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal, where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. On the video we published recently with mistakes you should avoid making in Spain, we mentioned skipping Zaragoza as one of such mistakes. If there is one city that goes unnoticed by visitors to Spain, it is Zaragoza, the Spanish underrated destination, a situation we want to change with this video. Located in northeast Spain, Zaragoza has a strategic location, offering a perfect stopover on any journey between Barcelona and Madrid. All the high-speed train companies that connect Barcelona with Madrid have services that stop halfway in Zaragoza. It is very easy to get here. Let's go through the 13 reasons in strict alphabetical order. We open our list with the city's must see monument, the Palacio de la Aljaferia, the Aljaferia Palace. It was built by the Muslim king Al Muqtadir and is today, along with the Mosque of Cordoba, the Alcázar in Seville, and the Alhambra in Granada, one of the most spectacular reminders of the passage of the Arabs through the Iberian Peninsula. The Aljaferia was declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO as one of the most representative monuments of Mudej her art. Mudejar is the art made by Muslim artists who remained in the Iberian Peninsula after the end of the Reconquest. At first they maintained their religion, but later they were forced to convert to Christianity. And this art, which combines Islamic and Christian traditions, will be discussed again in the video. Over the centuries the palace has had different uses, which you will discover during the visit, which covers the main premises and also includes a quick tour of the modern Cortes de Aragón, the regional assembly. The Aljaferia is a 20-minute walk from the historic center of Zaragoza, and if you visit the city, you cannot miss the palace. Casco Viejo is the term used in Zaragoza to refer to the historic center of the city. Its boundaries more or less coincide with those of the ancient Roman city being located between the Plaza de España to the south and the River Ebro to the north. The district is made up of several neighborhoods with narrow streets, the perfect setting for a walk through the history of Zaragoza. Many of the places we are going to present in this video are located within the Casco Viejo, a neighborhood that, in addition to narrow streets, is dotted with charming squares, such as Plaza de Santa Marta, Plaza de San Pedro Nolasco, Plaza de Santa Cruz, Plaza de San Felipe, or Plaza del Justicia. Calle Alfonso is one of the city's most prominent shopping streets and one of the main exits of the old town. The Casco Viejo is a part of the city that it is best explored on foot.
Although it is not the great civic space that the river is in other cities in Spain, River Ebro, one of the most important rivers in Spain, which crosses Zaragoza from west to east, is a beloved symbol for the city's inhabitants, and you should visit it during your stay in the city. The river is crossed by several bridges, but the ones you should visit are the Puente de Piedra and the Puente de Santiago. The latter is a modern bridge with no special architectural interest, but that it offers a beautiful view of the Basilica del Pilar and the river in front of it. The Puente de Piedra, the stone bridge, is the oldest bridge in the city. It is a 15th century bridge that was built on the site of an older bridge from Roman times. The end of the day is the best time to walk to the middle of the Puente de Piedra, because from there you can contemplate a wonderful sunset with the river and the Basilica del Pilar. For those who have more time in Zaragoza, the Expo area and the Parque del Agua are two very interesting places. As they are a bit far from the center, they are not suitable for those who are only going to spend a day in Zaragoza. The Expo and the Parque del Agua Luis Buñuel were built for the 2008 International Exposition held in Zaragoza. The Expo site is the space where the International Exposition was held. Numerous pavilions and buildings were constructed there. Today, some buildings are used by public institutions and companies. Others remain closed. The Parque del Agua is not a water park, but rather a traditional park, quite beautiful and extense. It offers a wide range of leisure activities, including a tranquil lake that can be visited by kayak or rowing boat. During the summer, there is an artificial beach area. In good weather, you can spend a pleasant half day combining a visit to the expo with a visit to the Parque del Agua. Both are always open and admission is free. Several local bus lines will take you there from the center of Zaragoza. The most important festivities of the year in Zaragoza are the Fiestas del Pilar, and they always take place around the 12th of October. The Fiestas del Pilar are a reason to fall in love with Zaragoza because it is a very interesting, popular festival in which the city looks its best. The program of festivities is very complete, but the two most important events are the Ofrenda de Flores, the offering of flowers, and the Ofrenda de Frutos, the offering of fruit. The Ofrenda de Flores takes place on the 12th and is the most important event of the week. Between 300,000 and 400,000 people, all of them dressed in traditional costumes, parade through the city to bring flowers to the statue of the Virgen del Pilar, located in the middle of the Plaza del Pilar. The offering lasts all day and you can go and see it whenever you like. On the next day, on the 13th, the Ofrenda de Frutos takes place, where instead of flowers, an offering of food is brought. This is the day on which many groups from other parts of Spain and even from abroad parade. The Ofrenda de Frutos takes place in the morning and it's much shorter than the flower offering. On the 13th, the Plaza del Pilar is usually crowded because people want to see how the Virgin's mantle of flowers has turned out after the flower offering the day before. The fiestas always end with fireworks on the banks of the river Ebro. If you are one of those who like to visit the markets of the cities you go to, you should not miss the central market of Zaragoza, which is still an authentic market where the locals of the city shop. 
The Central Market Building, also known as Mercado de la Nuza, was inaugurated in 1903 and is one of the most beautiful buildings of modernist architecture that you will be able to see in Zaragoza. The market was reopened in 2020 after a major refurbishment, which has left it very beautiful. Enter through one end of the market and walk around it from end to end, taking a look at the products sold in its 90 stalls. Mudejar, as we mentioned earlier, is the art produced by Muslim artists who remained in the Iberian Peninsula after the end of their reconquest. We have already seen examples of this art in the Aljaferia Palace. And now we are going to talk about three other places in Zaragoza that are beautiful examples of Mudejar from Aragon. The first is the Church of San Pablo, St. Paul, and its bell tower, declared a World Heritage Site because of the purity of the Mudejar style found there. The tower has an octagonal base and was built around an old minaret. The second Mudejar beauty of Zaragoza is the tower of the Iglesia de la Magdalena, also a former minaret of an Arab mosque and which here has glazed ceramic pieces that embellish the tower even more. Finally, don't miss one of the masterpieces of Mudejar art in Spain, the exterior wall of the Parroquieta de la Seo, the Cathedral of the Savior. It is a work dating from 1374 with an impressive artistic and symbolic richness. The Mudejar of la Seo has also been recognized by UNESCO, which has included it on the World Heritage List. We have already seen that the Aljaferia Palace is located outside the historic center. The three remaining works can be visited on a stroll through the center of Zaragoza. The Parque Grande José Antonio Labordeta, named after one of the greatest local musicians of all time, is the most traditional park in Zaragoza. It is not in the city center, but it is very easy to get to, either by walking along Paseo de la Independencia, Gran Vía, and Paseo de Fernando el Católico, or by taking the tram from Plaza de España, which takes you to the park. If you have enough time in Zaragoza, it is a very pleasant walk. It is a very popular place for locals who visit it for a quiet stroll or to exercise. You can rent bicycles to ride around the park, a good plan if you go with children. The park has a small, quite small, and charming botanical garden. If you visit the park, go up to the Cabezo, where there is a monument to El Batallador, King Alfonso I of Aragon, who reconquered the city from the Arabs. On a hot day, the park's numerous fountains are a welcome refreshment. The Paseo de la Independencia is probably the most important avenue in Zaragoza connecting the Plaza de Aragón with the Plaza de España. To be honest, it is not the most beautiful place in the city, but it is the place where you can take the real pulse of Zaragoza. Being a neighbor of the old town, it is very easy to take a stroll along the Paseo de la Independencia, visiting several places of interest along the way. Porches de la Independencia are a classic place where we people from Zaragoza take a leisurely stroll.
the address most beloved by the people of Zaragoza, is also one of the most beautiful squares in Europe. The Plaza del Pilar is also known as Plaza de las Catedrales, the square of the cathedrals, due to the unusual fact that it has two different cathedrals in the same square. As you will see in the image, there are many points of interest in and around the square. Let's take a look at them. At the western end of the square, next to the church of San Juan de los Panetes and its leaning tower, stands the Torreón de la Zuda. La Zuda was an ancient Muslim palace, and the tower you can visit today was the keep of the palace. At the base of the tower, there is a small tourist office, but you have to go upstairs via staircase because on the top floor there is a space known as the Mirador de las Cuatro Culturas, the viewpoint of the four cultures, with beautiful views of Zaragoza. The visit to the viewpoint is free of charge. The most important building in the square is the Basílica de Nuestra Señora del Pilar, or simply El Pilar, one of the most important Marian temples in the world. The original church dates back to the 9th century. Successive extensions were built on top of the old church until it became the gigantic Baroque temple that can be seen today. The church was declared completed in 1872, although the exterior towers date from the 20th century. Inside El Pilar, in the beautiful Santa Capilla, one of the masterpieces of Spanish Baroque architecture, is the image of the Virgen del Pilar resting on the holy column. At the back of the Santa Capilla is the Humilladero, the place where the faithful can kiss the column on which the Virgin rests. A hole in the wall allows one to approach the base of the column. At the top of one of the domes is the fresco Regina Martyrum, painted by the Aragonese genius Francisco de Goya. It is a pity that the lighting is not adequate to fully appreciate it. In the main altar of El Pilar is one of the jewels of the temple, the spectacular Renaissance altar piece built with alabaster, an abundant material in Aragon. You can climb one of the towers of the temple with spectacular views of the city. Continuing on from the Basilica is the Ayuntamiento de Zaragoza, Zaragoza City Hall, a central point for civic meetings, celebrations and protests. Further on is the Palacio de la Lonja, a Renaissance palace now used for cultural exhibitions, and in front of the Lonja there is a tribute to the figure of the local artist Francisco de Goya. At the end of the Plaza del Pilar is the Catedral del Salvador, better known as La Seo the second cathedral of the square, a masterpiece of Mudéjar art from Aragon, declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. It was also the first Christian cathedral in Zaragoza. The cathedral was built on the same site that was originally occupied by the city's Roman Forum Temple, and later by the Great Mosque. Today the cathedral contains a great mixture of architectural styles, from Romanesque to Neoclassical, Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque. The interior of the temple is surprisingly beautiful, but as filming and photography are not allowed, we will only show some photos taken many years ago when this annoying ban did not yet exist. While the visit to El Pilar is free, you have to pay to enter La Seo. You pay, but you cannot take pictures. On the right, opposite the cathedral, is the Museum of the Roman Forum of Caesar Augusta, a building that is striking for its modernity. A prison with walls covered with onyx slabs provides access to the museum, which is located in the basement of the square and contains the remains of the Forum of the Roman City. A bronze statue of the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus, a copy of the famous Augustus of Prima Porta, a work that today can be seen in the Vatican Museums in Rome, recalls the Roman origin of Zaragoza, the ancient Caesar Augusta, founded by the Emperor in 14 BC. Just behind the statue are the most important remains of the Roman walls of Zaragoza, which were three kilometers long and surrounded the ancient city. After the 15th 
19th century, the Rose of Zaragoza overtook the wall and ceased to serve as a defensive wall. Four museums preserve all their important archaeological remains from Roman times. The Roman Theater Museum, the Forum Museum, the Riverport Museum and the Baths Museum. You can buy separate tickets to visit each of the museums or one ticket to visit them all. All the museums are located very close to each other in the old town of Zaragoza and give you a better understanding of the origins of the city. Along with the Fiestas del Pilar, the other important date in Zaragoza's annual calendar is the Semana Santa, Easter week, declared to be of international tourist interest. Holy Week has centuries of history and over the course of the week you can watch 53 processions with different brotherhoods and a total of 16,000 penitents. And before anyone asks, the uniforms with the pointed hoods are centuries old and bear no connection whatsoever to the ones used by supremacist groups in America. Even if you are not a believer, it is a fascinating spectacle. Some of the most spectacular processions can be seen during the day on Palm Sunday, on the evening of Monday, Thursday, and on Good Friday afternoon when the grandiose holy burial takes place. What, above all, marks the Semana Santa in Zaragoza is its soundtrack, which features the resounding sound of drums. <laughs> For anyone born in Aragon like myself, the penetrating sound of the drums is a very important part of our culture. An added bonus of Zaragoza Semana Santa is that it is not as busy as those in cities like Seville or Malaga. You can take your seat to watch a procession on the spot, no need to arrive hours in advance. If you ask a Spaniard which are the best known places in Zaragoza, he or she will most likely answer, on the one hand, the Basilica del Pilar, and on the other hand, the place that closes our list of reasons to fall in love with Zaragoza, a legendary labyrinth of narrow streets known as El Tubo. The Tube. El Tubo is a group of streets in Zaragoza's old town near the Plaza de España. The area is famous for its numerous bars and bustling day and night life. El Tubo has some more tourist focused bars, along with great bars where we locals go, where you can enjoy delicious tapas and wines. And with food, we end this video. We're thinking that if this video gets a large number of likes and requests, we might record a video sharing with you our favorite tapas bars in our city. Would you like that? <laughs> Remember that we already have a video on our channel where we share some guidelines about accommodation in Zaragoza. Always remembering that accommodation prices in Zaragoza are much more affordable than those in Madrid or Barcelona, so another reason to visit Zaragoza. As always, if you have any questions about the city, use the commentary box to ask. If you have the chance, don't miss the opportunity to visit Zaragoza. And if you want your trip to Spain to be perfect, be sure to watch our video of mistakes you should avoid making if you travel to Spain. We look forward to seeing you in that video.